And we want this time to be profitable to you. Amen. We welcome those on live stream also, how we do appreciate your fellowship. <clears throat> Now, I ask that you bear with me tonight. I'm feeling a little under the weather. I know, what am I doing under the weather? Well, I'm, I'm trying to get out from underneath there. <coughs> I didn't want to feel weak during this message. It's a very, very critical message. Living by faith versus living by doing. Now this is critical because of all the things that I believe are hazy in the average Christian's mind, the covenants is way up there, ranks really high. There's hardly any preaching done on this. And uh, until you understand this, you're not, you're not going to do very well. That's why so much Paul labors on this extensively. In fact, he's the only one that really does. The only inspired writer that dealt with the covenants is Paul. But God revealed this to him. He gave the Gentiles a chance to know more. You got to really see this now, brethren. But actually, they know less. The Gentile church is less cognizant of God than the Jewish community is. It's terrible to say that, but that's that's just the way. It, that has before it can be resolved. Before you can address these situations, you do have to know they exist. That's right. Amen. There's been a tremendous neglect in this area of teaching concerning the covenants, which is so critical because Christ is the mediator of the new covenant. A better covenant establishes up better promises, and to be ignorant of it, see, this is just intolerable. That's all, just intolerable. Our text, our texts mention that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. See, that's <laughs> not to everyone obeys, to everyone that believes. See, the question comes, how do men live in an acceptable manner to God? Some people don't think you really have to live uh -huh. in a manner acceptable to God. They believe that God is the kind of God that just will accept just anybody. Well, yeah. God won't accept just anybody. Right. Right. Got to really see this. Yeah. God would that all men be saved, but he doesn't accept everybody. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's made us accepted in the Beloved. Yes. So how does a man live in an acceptable manner before God? Some say, well, it's by adhering to the Ten Commandments. That's how you do it. Keep the Ten Commandments. Others, uh, they say, well, it's by personal discipline and re personal regimentation. You've got to get a control of your life and, and do it. And some say, just do the best you can. That's, that's all. Just, just do the best you can. But... Anyone with a sensitive heart, this doesn't sound like it's right. <laughs> this has a sound to being dead wrong. The God of heaven doesn't operate like this. He does on a critical issue like whether he receives you or not. He doesn't leave that to surmising and philosophizing and guesswork. So how a person lives is a central consideration, but what causes him to live that way, that's what we want to address here tonight. Now the law advocated, that's too weak, the law demanded that you lived by doing. You were just as alive as you did, and you couldn't do like here and there. You couldn't do this one and not that one and try your best here but fail there. You were not allowed out a single failure. The law didn't allow a single solitary failure. First sin you committed, at that you need a savior. Whether you're Adam and Eve or whether you're us, that's the way it is. So let me establish first of all that the law advocated living by doing. That is, God said, here's what you do, 
You do it, you'll live. That's, that's the arrangement. Leviticus 18.5, which is quoted several places in Scripture. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. <laughs> that is, this is the way it is. So do you want to live by rules, do you? Let me tell you. There is not a system of rules in the world today that demands that they all be kept. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. There's no such thing. Yeah. Every set of rules has some kind of leniency. Yeah. Uh -huh. The law didn't have leniency. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> you had to do them, all of them. Years after that was stated, Nehemiah, after the Babylonian captivity, said this Nehemiah 9.29, and testifiest against them that thou mightest bring them again unto thy law. Yet they dealt proudly, hearkened not unto thy commandments, but sinned against thy judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. And contrary to that, they withdrew the shoulder and hardened their neck and would not hear. Mm -hmm. See, it's really finally just, we can't, they just drew back. Oh yeah, but you you see you know people that have done this. Yes. They tried real hard, real hard, real hard, couldn't do it, so they just yeah. drew back. <coughs> but the law won't allow you to draw back. That's that's what I'm yeah. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Then Galatians three twelve says the law is not of faith. The law gave no commandment to believe. There was no commandment in the law to believe. Zero, none. The law didn't demand believing. The law is not a faith. Doesn't, it wasn't contingent upon faith. It was contingent on doing. The law is not a faith. The man that doeth them shall live in them. See, that's the... I want to do well in this because the majority of church people I know are pretty dense on this subject. James 2.10, which text has been grossly corrupted, he talked about this. And James, what, what James was saying is this is, he wasn't saying this is what you have to do. He said under the law this is what you have to do. Here's what he said, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I've heard that preached and applied to people as though that was the standard rule by which we're to live. James is making a statement here that you, you've got to live by faith, and if you don't, you are stone dead. Faith without works is no more faith than a body without a spirit's a man. That's what James talked about. James wrote, James wasn't establishing Bible doctrine. James was refuting hypocrisy. He was writing to people that had not measured up, yet made the profession. Got to keep the whole law. If you fit in one point, it's no different than if you broke every one of them. I know someone says, well, how, how can this be? Well, if a, if a man fell off a cliff on the way down, he sees a chain hanging out of the wall. He, he gets a hold of this chain and it breaks his fall. It's a 10 link chain. How many of those links have to break before he falls? All 10 of them? That's all, just one. But see, you live by doing, it's got to be 100% or you're rejected. That's the rule. The law doesn't require faith. The law doesn't foster faith. If you, you could read the law over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Read Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy over and over and over and over, and it will not produce one grain of faith. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Why not? Because it wasn't designed to. That's right. yeah. 
If you're gonna talk about faith, you gotta you gotta get it somewhere else. You can't get it there. In the law, living is equated with being righteous. That's what it says living. You'll live, you're talking about being righteous before God. God won't kill you, in other words. That's that's kind of a crude <laughs> that's kind of crude, but that's what it means. I won't take your life. That's what living means. There's no friction between the individual and God. That's living. No friction. Now Israel, uh, Israel proved that they were at variance with God. And how often this is, this is stated. Now, it's, it's, I understand it's not fashionable to talk this way. I, I understand that. But this is God that said this. Yes. And where there's not faith, this is the way God talks. People have to have to see this. <coughs> Exodus 32, 9, the Lord said to Moses, I've seen this people, behold, it's a stiff-necked people. Wait a minute, they won't even turn their head to look at me, see? They, Deuteronomy 9, 24, ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day I knew you. If God said it, they just kicked both their back. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As high as the heaven is above the earth, so high are my thoughts above your thoughts and my ways above your ways. See, God will not walk with a person like that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amos 4, 4, how can two walk together except they be agreed? He was talking about God and man. If a person not in agreement with God, I mean, it may be a preacher, it could be a professor, it could be some dignitary. If they're not in agreement with God, they're an enemy. That's right. Yeah. God won't address them as a friend. Mm -hmm. And I understand there are some people that agree with God, but they need, they realize they need some grace to, mm -hmm. to measure up. Ezekiel 3, 7, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. See, God told us. Send Ezekiel out with a true message. Mm -hmm. As I got to make your forehead like flint. Now you got to really, you got to kind of be spiritually stubborn. You can't let, mm -hmm. you can't let people affect you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make your forehead like flint. Yeah. So when people criticize you and make charges against you, they just bounce. Mm -hmm. See, you can't be sensitive, overly sensitive about criticism and be a laborer for God. This. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't, that's all. And if you've ever done any work for God, you know this. Because mm -hmm. you have to be kind of self-centered to, yeah. to react that way. <coughs> now the scriptures assess our situation outside of Christ. He doesn't say, well, we just needed help. That's all. No, he said we were dead in trespasses and sins. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's where we were at. Yes, we're yeah. dead in trespasses and sins. Yeah. Dead in sins, Ephesians 2, 1 and 5. See, under the law, when you sinned, you died. Yeah. Yeah. Two times it's stated in Ezekiel 18, 4 and 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Amen. A law can't resurrect yeah. someone dead. You can stand over and recite the Ten Commandments and all the Levitical law, you can do the whole book of Deuteronomy, and it will not bring them back from the dead. That's right. yep. The law wasn't designed to do that. Yeah. You can send them to the Proverbs. Proverbs won't raise the dead. It wasn't that inspired? Yeah, but it wasn't inspired to raise the dead. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. We're talking about raising the dead here. Yeah. We're talking about pay, making people that are unacceptable, yeah. acceptable. Yeah. We're talking about that. Yeah. We're talking about people that have no hope getting hope. Yeah. We're talking about that, yeah. see? Yeah. And until people realize they're in that category over here, no hope, dead and trespassed and yeah. sins without yeah. God, without God in this present world, yeah. until they realize that, Jesus means nothing. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But when they realize this, all of a sudden, Jesus, ho, oh, oh, ho, Jesus is a piece of good news. Yeah. <laughs> Under the law, as soon as you sinned, you died, as I mentioned. This is because God's a living God. Yeah, amen. You could ask Satan, can God tolerate sin? He could tell you. That's right. Ask the angels, uh -huh. how about is God tolerate sin? They could tell you. 
Why not ask Adam and Eve? Say, Adam and Eve. How does God feel about like one sin? Well, they could tell you. See, ask Cain. What? Ask the people of Noah's day. What is God's reaction to sin? Do you think God has changed? No. God said to Malachi, the Lord changed not. Yeah. But God is so powerful, he can change people. Yeah. But he doesn't do it through law. Yeah. He doesn't do it through instruction on what they should do. He doesn't give them like a road map. This is a secret to life. This is not how he does it. The dead aren't raised that way. Trespass and sins brings death. Now under the law, whether you, whoever you were when you sinned, it like cut the umbilical cord. Yeah, yeah. There had to be another means of, of creating and sustaining life. See, it wasn't just making them alive, they had to stay alive. See? Yeah, amen. They had to stay alive. Adam and Eve really were really alive at one time. Mm -hmm. But then they died. Mm -hmm. And Christ, Christ's sacrifice took care of the sin of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Well, they'd have never been forgiven. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you remember in Hebrews 3, 12, 12 to the church, this is to the church. Take heed, brethren. See, brethren. Mm -hmm. Take heed. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the from the living God. Yeah. So why does a why does a person back off from God? Mm. Why do they all of a sudden quit putting out some effort to actually please God and live from what what makes people do that? It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. It's an evil heart of unbelief. Yeah. And you None of us are above this. Mm -hmm. You beware. See, uh, turn your head, be distracted with something else, occupy your life with lesser things, and here comes unbelief. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon it'll, it'll get hold of you. That's right. And you'll depart from the living God. Mm -hmm. So we live, the law represented living by doing. 100% doing. 100% of the time doing, 100% of the commandments doing. That was the remedy under the law. Never, and I've said this myself, but I quit, I quit saying it. Never say to people, you can't keep the law. Yeah, yeah. In first place, that's not said that way any place in scripture. That's right. It doesn't say they could not, it says they did not. That's right. amen. Am I right here? Yes, amen. He didn't say they couldn't keep the law. He said they didn't keep the law. Uh -huh. Do you say that some people think, well, God can overlook that? No. No, God can't overlook that. Otherwise, he would not have sent Christ. That's how serious it was. Amen. Yeah, amen. Christ had to divest himself yeah. of the prerogatives of deity. He had to divest himself of all of that, come into the world, be subjected to temptation at the most profound level, lay down his life and taste of the wrath of God, uh -huh. mm -hmm. feel the contamination of sin, which so he did not have one single sin, uh -huh. and he went from that spotless state to having the sin of the world. Yeah. I mean, I, we're not capable of imagining the impact that had on Jesus, because he his nature was contrary to sin. Right. And if God hadn't have done this, the sin never could have got on Christ. Yeah. If God didn't lay the iniquities of us all upon Christ, they'd have never got there. Amen. Yeah. And Jesus submitted to that because he knew he could come back, mm -hmm. whereas yeah. humanity couldn't. Yes. Couldn't come back. Now, the law had no procedure or a ceremony to deliver a person from the state of death. Now, physical death or spiritual death, either one. The law had no ceremony that could deliver you yeah. from death. Because that isn't what it was for. Everyone, it's important that you, that you see this. Yeah. 
All moral codes, all moral procedures, all forms of regimentation, they all are living by doing. All, all of them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All. It doesn't make any difference who said they sanctified it. It's still a no law. See, if God's law can't do it, do you mean some man's law can? Yes. People should see this. this. There should be no argument about this at all. That's right. You cannot be changed, and you do have to be changed. Yes. Yeah, you cannot be changed by a procedure. Even under the law, it, the, with the cleansing was ceremonial. Mm -hmm. They weren't really cleansed. They could just walk out of camp again, but they weren't. They weren't really. Their sins still had to be forgiven by the blood of Christ yeah. later. <laughs> under faith, you do what's revealed, and what you do confirms that you have faith. You, you gotta see. It's, it's faith that saves. Right. It's Amen. faith that justifies. We're justified by faith. Yes. Faith justifies what you do confirms you got faith. Amen. If you don't do, you don't have faith. Yes. Remember how Paul in Romans 2 upbraided some of the Jewish believers there in Rome because they said and did not. Amen. This is not acceptable. Yes. In Christ, it's not acceptable. You say, well, what we all sin, well, you better be up and confessing your sin. Yes, that's right. Amen. Yes. We, yes. Man, it had to be dishonest or a fool to say none of us sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it must be confessed. It's got to be addressed. Amen. Yes. And it can't be addressed by a procedure. That's right. Amen. Uh, the Roman Catholic heresy says that you do penance so you repeat this prayer seven or eight times or go through this procedure seven or eight times and you'll have to spend less time in purgatory. This is a doctrine now. This is a doctrine. People believe this. This is a doctrine. If you got enough money, you can pay your, pay your way out. This isn't like fables. We were in Indiana. We bought a building that was a Catholic. It was a Catholic church. They built another big church and they so they had all the Catholic literature and liturgies and confessional cards and all left in the church I got them in my files this was actually for plenary indulgence plenary indulgence means you can be forgiven of everything mm -hmm. plenary indulgence if you kiss the book and read it for 15 minutes a day you are granted plenary indulgence still believed. To this day, it's still believed. Yeah. It's still believed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there's some Protestantism that has kind of modified it, but it's the same kind of situation. If you come to the recovery sessions for a while, mm -hmm. then you'll finally get the victory. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, I w I, I'm not going to do it, but I could do this. I could challenge someone to a public debate on this issue. Have no trouble doing it at all, but I'm not. I just don't feel like doing it right now. To prove that you can actually overcome sin by a procedure, any procedure, or if you do it long enough, the longing will leave. The only way that longing won't dominate you is you have to crucify the flesh. And there's, n there's no law book that will tell you how to crucify the flesh. <laughs> so it's what you do that makes the real difference. That's what law says. It's what you believe that makes the real difference. That's what, that's what the new covenant says. <laughs> Now, let's go into this living by faith. I'll cover it. Living by doing. Mm -hmm. You had to do it all. No more mistakes allowed. You had to do it all. Now, think, think of these, these texts. Living by faith. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. See that? Mm -hmm. It's living. John 3.36, John 5.24, Verily I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him, but sent me hath everlasting life. See there? Mm -hmm. Believing. 
John 6, 47, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. See there, there it is again. John 20, 31, these things are written, so you might believe in that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. There it is again. Jesus said in John 6, 35, <coughs> he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 7, 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this beg ye the Holy Spirit of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Yes. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Well, he's glorified now. Amen. He's been glorified now. Yes. And whoever believes on the Son, the Holy Spirit comes in them and flows out yes. like a river. Amen. John 11, 25, Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. See, the law never said that. that those words are never uttered under the law. 1 Peter 2, 6, Therefore also it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall never be confounded or disappointed or up against a brick wall, yeah. or overcome by a sin. Uh -huh. huh? See, the law made no promise like that mm -hmm. at all. First John 5, 5, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Mm -hmm. So if a person doesn't overcome the world, they may deny this, but they haven't believed Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. This is what the Scripture says. Doesn't make any difference what they say. Right. They say, I believe with all my heart. Well, I don't believe them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Person who's not overcoming the world, faith's the problem. Yeah, that's right. Believing is the problem. Whether it's you or whether it's me. First John, First Peter two six. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Romans fifteen thirteen. Now the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, mm -hmm. that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See, the law gave no. Law gave no promise like that. Amen. How about abounding in hope? If you find a person that's abounding in hope, I mean really abounding in hope, you found an unusual person. Thank God for them and shake their hand and tell them you appreciate them. Amen. Because they're not like on every corner. Amen. It's not because provision's not made for it. See, the law didn't make any provision like this. <laughs> First Peter 1 Peter 1.8, Whom have you not seen? Ye love, in whom though now ye see him not yet belight, believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, it's a joy you can't really put it in words. Yeah. The law didn't give anything like that. The law never promised joy unspeakable yeah. and full of glory. But it's the promise of those who believe. Yes. Believing. See, it's at a whole different dimension yes. than doing. Jesus said, Mark 9, 23, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, now that's not an obsolete word. I mean, that, Jesus can't lie. Amen. That's still true. Yes. If you can believe, everything's possible. Amen. Amen. So if you've got situations that look like they're out of hand, then you've got to work on believing. Because you got this promise from the king. Yes. The king has made this promise. If you can believe, everything's possible. Yeah. Nothing like this said under the law. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. John 12, 26. I am come a light into the world. Whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Yeah. Should not doesn't mean ought not. Yeah. Means, it means he will not. Yeah. Amen. If he believes on me. If he believes on me, I'll take him out of darkness, yeah. the kingdom of darkness, yeah. and put him in the kingdom of God's dear son. See? Yeah. If they believe. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if a person is surrounded by darkness, spiritual ignorance, they just don't understand, they just don't know, and it's believing what the problem is. That's what you got to concentrate on. you got to bring them to believe. Because yeah. Jesus said, if you believe on me, you'll not stay in darkness. Yeah. Darkness is ignorance of being unaware. Mm -hmm. 
Acts 10.43, see I'm emphasizing that believing. Yes. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth on him shall receive remission of sins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know that some people would argue with that. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't hear, and that doesn't mean you shouldn't be baptized, and that doesn't mean... This, we're talking root here. We're not talking yeah. branches. Yeah, that's yes. right. yeah. We're talking the river, not tributaries here. Yeah. Yeah. That if you don't believe, you can be baptized a hundred times, and you're just like, you've just been dunked. That's, that's all. Right. Yeah. That's all. Amen. My father told me when he was growing up, Southwest Arkansas, that he had a lot of trouble with ticks in the cattle. And they had big vats. They'd fill them up with kerosene and they'd dunk the cattle in the vat. That's how some people have been baptized. I'm telling you the truth. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to try to identify who it is. I'm just saying the kind of lives people are living, they couldn't have been baptized into Christ. They couldn't have been. Couldn't have been. It's up to God to determine who they are. But that, we need to tell people. This needs to be told people. Yeah, that's right. Preachers and these need to tell people this. Uh -huh. If you've got a problem of living in sin, something's wrong here yeah. because you are defying what the doctrine says. Yeah, yeah. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yeah. All yeah. things have passed away. Yeah. Behold, all things are become new. And if those conditions haven't met, what been met, mean? Well, they just must be met. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, <coughs> this is a, a micro view of life. Mm -hmm. Believing on the Son, having eternal life. Mm -hmm. Believing on the Son, being delivered. So forth. this is a, mm -hmm. a micro view of, mm -hmm. of life. It's like, here's how we say it, that you have ears to hear and eyes to see. Yeah. That's, that's what living is, see. Uh -huh. Ears to hear, eyes to see. Amen. Moses said to Israel, he says, I've led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxing old from you and your shoes not waxing old upon your foot. And, but you've not been given ears to hear. God's not given you ears to hear yeah. and eyes to see. What happened on the day of Pentecost? What happened there? God gave them ears to hear, yeah. eyes to see. Amen. They saw what was going on. They didn't say this is fraudulent. They had ears to hear. What must we do? And they did what Peter said. What was that? They believed, and God gave them ears to hear and eyes to see. You can, sit, you can pray this for people you know that you've been laboring, you've been laboring with them, or maybe you've been a little, a little discouraged because there hadn't been enough progress. All right, take, now take it up with God. Yeah. Quit now, quit, quit trying to do it to them. Mm -hmm. Take it up to God and say, give them eyes to see and yeah. ears to hear. Amen. God can do it. That's right. Even Solomon said, the seeing ear and the hearing eye, the seeing eye and the hearing ear, God's given them both. Yes. So God... God can enable people to hear Amen. the first time. Yes, Everyone that was converted in the book of Acts, it was after one sermon. Mm -hmm. Check it out yourself and yeah. see. Mm -hmm. It's after one sermon, one exposure to the gospel, every conversion. Pentecost was that way. House of Cornelius was that way. Lydia's house was that way. Cornelius' house was that way. Ethiopian eunuch was that way. City of Samaria was that way. Trace it all the way through the book of Acts. Now here's what, you say, well, how, how can that be? They, had, they were preaching a pure gospel. Yeah. yeah, a pure gospel is not being preached today. Yeah. It doesn't please me. I don't like having to say this. I'm not just complaining. But if what the gospel does isn't being done, and something's wrong. It's another gospel. Yeah, that's right. And God said to Solomon, 1 Kings 3.9, he said, uh, I'm going to give you an understanding heart. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. Uh, yeah. 
That's what he does to people that believe the gospel. He gives them an understanding heart. So they, they never will have trouble believing what God said. They may have to work at comprehending it. I mean, I understand this, but they don't have to work on believing it. Jesus said once to his disciples, Luke 10, 23, I'm coming, I'm believing being the means to life, see, as, we're, as compared with doing. He turned unto his disciples and said privately, <laughs> privately. He didn't say this out there so everybody could hear it. He said privately, blessed are, the, blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. Many prophets and holy men have desired to see these things and didn't see them. Might be an encouraging word to talk to someone that has believed, <coughs> but they need to be strengthened a little bit. You, you could say, you've been blessed. Yeah. God's blessed you with eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. So you have reason for good hope, and you, you may not be where you want to be yet, mm -hmm. but see, God's going to perform this work till the day of Christ, yes. all right? Amen. Under the process, under the old covenant, let me go over it once more. Galatians 3.12. The law is not of faith. That's it doesn't require faith. It doesn't cause faith. <laughs> it's entirely separate from faith. Now, this side of the conversion, we realize that the law required men more of man than man is able to give. And we, we understand this. But this isn't what you tell disobedient people. Say, well, don't, don't worry. No, no one was able to keep it. Uh -huh. and God knew that you couldn't keep it. Don't. Yeah. A person has to be convinced that it has to be kept. Yeah. Yeah. This is how the law leads you to Christ. Yeah. Yeah, pe people are told you can't do it. God knows you couldn't do it. If people are told this, they won't extend the effort, which means the law won't lead them to Christ. So they've got to believe that it has to be done. Amen. Amen. <laughs> then the law won't let go. It'll just, like a person driving cattle, it'll drive you, drive you to Christ. Under the law you do, then you live. Right? Under the new covenant, you live, yeah. then you do. <laughs> Praise God, I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm thankful for that, aren't you? Amen. Do and live, or live and do. Yeah. Makes perfect sense, yes. actually, when you think about it. It makes sense. Uh, So now God works, <coughs> works in men to will and do of his own good pleasure. So what happens when you believe? This aligns you with, this aligns you with God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that something now can actually pass from God to you. Uh -huh. See? And then God will work in you to will and do of his own yeah. good pleasure. And your job now is to keep that connection clear. Yeah. Don't let anything get in between you and the Lord. Some people, their job gets between them and the Lord. Their school, their family, their career gets between them and God. When, if anything gets between you and God, if anything gets there, then the work comes to a grinding halt. <laughs> and everything you need to keep the channel clear, everything you need has been supplied. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So everything you need Amen. to keep the channel between you and God clear, everything you need is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And we must ever remind one another of this. Things may seem bad, but they're not that bad. Amen. We still have access to all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are hidden in Christ. We still got, still got access to that, and that's because you believe. See, your faith... Is like a key. Those are like a hand. Faith is like a hand to get hold of the things of God. And when you do, 
God always honors faith. Amen. Every time he says, he that believes, you know, every time he says that, yeah. it's always a positive Amen. affirmation. Amen. Brother Ricky has our exhortation tonight. <laughs>